How you doing, Duff here? It's now time for another automotive project. Today I'm going to be attempting to replace the uh, the shoes on my rear drum brakes on my 1999 Toyota Tacoma. You see me do a lot of uh, different projects in this truck, and this is my latest. I once attempted drum brakes years ago on my mom's Toyota RAV4, and that did not go well. I found it very confusing uh, to get everything back together and. Uh, Actually, I need to update that video and put a disclaimer on it because I've had people be pissed off because it didn't really do a good job of showing you much of anything except that it's a pain in the ass. So I'll do that soon. Um, but anyways, I have my truck jacked up. Have um, jack stands underneath the axle there with the uh, floor jack underneath just as a safety precaution. Have the wheels off, and uh, I'm going to be popping the drums off next. Now, because of the problems I've had doing this before. What I'm going to do, um, and this is something else I saw someone else recommend, is actually it's good to have the drums pulled on both sides so you have a visual reference as to where things go. Even though they're reversed, you still get a, a good idea of what goes where, which would have helped me a lot last time. Uh, in addition, I also plan to take a picture of it before I take it apart and use that as a reference as well. You know, obviously a mechanic that does this every day, they don't need these handicaps, but someone like me that's a very, very amateur and uh, low-skilled mechanic needs these kind of uh, guides to uh, help me along. So let me get the drums off and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, sometimes these things can be really tight and if they are, you either have to hit it with a mallet to kind of knock it loose and then, and then work it out. I've also seen you can buy a, a screw that actually goes in these fittings that presses against the, um, the body of the brake and pushes the, the hub out. So if it's really tight, you might have to resort to that. I don't think this will be that bad. Okay. All right. So I plan to um, tap out the dust and use some brake clean in here to uh, clean this as uh, good as possible. And uh, there you see the, uh, the brake assembly. It doesn't look as dirty as I thought it would look. And I'm... There's, there's a lot more pad on there than I expected as well. These. These drum brakes have not been touched in oh geez, at least 100,000 miles because this, the truck has 180 some thousand miles on it and there's pretty good thickness on there yet. I'm kind of surprised. Um, so, but anyways, I'm going to replace them just because it's good practice and um, I mean it's it's time obviously. So. Let me uh, let me clean some stuff up. I'm gonna spray this area down as well, get all the dust off, and uh, take some pictures, and then I'll be back. When I say um, clean stuff with brake clean, you know, there's specific cleaner for brake parts. That's what I'm gonna be using. That and some uh, shop towels. Yeah, they're pretty dirty. Okay, I'm spraying down the uh, actual brake assembly with brake clean as well. It's a good idea to have a bucket underneath it if you're going to do it in a garage or somewhere that you care about all the junk that comes out of it because uh, it's a lot of scuzz. Okay, so at this point I'm going to take a picture of this side. It's very good to have a reference. Like I said, uh, I have to stress again, it's good to have a visual, at least if you're like me, it's good to have a visual reference that you can go back to. 
uh, when it comes to putting this back together because there are a number of pieces that come apart and have to go underneath this and on top of that so you want to make sure that you uh, have a good idea a good game plan before you just start ripping it apart so that was my mistake the last time is I just pulled it apart and didn't pay close enough attention it didn't document where stuff went and uh, I was screwed so it took me forever to get it back together so okay let me take some pictures okay I took my my pictures I took I took a full shot I took a top shot and I took a bottom shot so, um, and I wrote on each one passenger and driver because, like I said, they are reversed. So, um, if I can't get it back together with this kind of reference, then uh, I shouldn't be touching the vehicle, I don't think so. I, at one point, I thought I recalled buying the tools to work on drum brakes. Like, there's a special, uh, like, socket sort of thing you can use to take these springs off. A special tool to help you stretch this spring here. I can't find them, unfortunately. So I'm gonna just have to kind of brute force it using like a, a pliers, needle nose pliers, screwdrivers, that kind of stuff. So should be a lot of fun. So I'm starting on the driver's side first, and I am going to start ripping stuff apart. But as I do, I will be laying stuff out um, the way that it comes off to try to help me. So funny, do you remember I just I just said that I couldn't find the tools. Of course, I didn't look in the one spot that uh, they should be. It's in my old red toolbox. Right here is the um, tool that you use to take these springs off. And I believe this was the, the thing I bought that's supposed to help you get the um, these springs here out and back on. So, that's funny. So maybe it'll go a little bit better now. I hope. Okay, here's my, my new pads. Again, for help, I'm going to lay these out on the ground. The way that they get oriented. Okay, so that goes like that. And I got these at Dura. I got these at AutoZone Duralast uh, shoes. And the part number on here looks like a 505. Doesn't seem long enough, does it? Skew number three five two five two six. Of course, these are not as good as genuine Toyota OEM pads. Uh, both the truck with 185,000 miles on it. Good enough, I think. Uh, two more things I forgot to mention uh, that you might want to make sure you do when you're working on the drum brakes is eye protection and I have gloves on. Just because you have these high tension springs and you certainly don't want that to um, pop off and uh, hit you in the eye. So I definitely recommend some eye protection and gloves. So the first thing that I'm going to be trying to get is this big long spring here. because This is kind of what holds everything together. I have some vice grips. See why vice grips are a good idea. You just grab that with regular pliers, fly, rip your hands open, whatever. Alright, so that looks underneath there somehow. thing in here. This is the uh, adjuster. Take that off. I think this other part here behind here is supposed to come up with it. Yeah. All right. 
think that'll come off when I get the rest of the shoe off. There's another spring down here, down low, that I don't believe is as tight. Ugh. Man, why don't you just make it easy? Take these these uh, retaining clips off and it should come off easy. You just basically turn it a quarter turn and it should pop off. There's uh, four pieces to it. You have this end cap goes over the spring. And there's a bottom part that's similar. And then you have the pin that comes through the back of the brake assembly. Do the same thing over here. And again, you can you can do this with a needle nose. It's just easier when you have the actual tool. Okay, so now this one should should be much looser now. The one on this side has much less going to it. Just this spring down here. Whoa! Okay, spring down here. I'm gonna lay this the way that it came off. Okay, this cable here, this is for your um, emergency brake, so just keep in mind that needs to be reconnected when you're done. And this assembly here has to come apart. These pieces have to come off. And they are a series of clips, it looks like. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so first we have an E-clip up top here. And there are special tools you could use for that, or you can just use a screwdriver, I think, and just kind of prop it off. was very smart. Keep an eye on that thing. I could have went flying. So once you get the E-clip off, there's another spring in the back here. This has to this has to come off to release the front. Alright. So let's just grab this one. This one's not that tight, so that one's pretty easy. So not like that. Kind of take a note of how this attaches on the back. We're going to have to do it again. Alright, so now this top piece will lift off. Okay. Let's set that down there. And then when that lifts off, it releases this, which is the other part of the adjuster. And then you just have this last arm here. And that's held on by another clip. I guess this is a C-clamp. And I think you just... Um, Basically, you just take a screwdriver and bend this open in between here. And I apologize if you know, it's not the best camera angle, but I'm trying to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Help you out. I'm not going to hold it with the vice grips. Locking with the vice grips. Now I'm going to stick my screw, my flat screwdriver in there, in a little gap, very little. Come on. All right, I think I have a tool for this. Hold on. You just want to take a look at the clamp that. The little clip that I'm trying to work on here. Come on, sucker. Okay, it's off. All right, so now this comes off. You 
you son of a bitch. Oh. See that? Every freaking project I do. See the problem there? This is a pre-runner. This is a pre-runner. Which evidently has bigger drums. Even though I punched in all my information on AutoZone. So, it's the wrong size. Freaking awesome. So, I guess I'm going to be running to AutoZone. And hoping they have the right size. Every project this happens, I'll tell you. It's always something. I'll be back. Okay, seems like a couple seconds for you, but that was actually a nice little road trip to go exchange the um, brake shoes I got online. Part number now is 589. The, um, the shoes for a pre-runner are the 11 inch variety. Whereas the shoes that I had received are like 8 inch shoes, so that's that's a problem, obviously. So now I have the right shoes, so I'm going to, let's see, lay these out. So they match up as far as the way the old shoes were. Down there, alrighty. Okay, and now I'm going to start rebuilding the shoes. So... back on. Okay, so this part went on first. It sits over that rivet right there. And then there was the screw in the back, or the spring in the back. And it goes between here and here, I think. Okay, as I was fussing with that spring, I eventually realized that I was trying to connect it to the wrong spot. One of the disadvantages of taking an hour and a half, two hour break in between of taking it apart and trying to put it back together. So I need to actually, I've got to put this, this clamp back on first. Should just push on. And once I put it back on, that spring is actually connect this and this piece together. So let me get this little clamp on, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I, whoops, I have it on, and now I just need to squeeze these together. Okay, got that back on. Just need to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And then the secondary piece goes on. This, which is part of the adjustment thing, goes like this and like that. So you can see how it goes here and then through the hole there. And then I have to put that secondary, I have to put the spring on the back. The spring goes in the back here. And then another clamp, so let me get that back together. Okay, so here's the spring that I just put back in. It goes from the back of this secondary piece to the little notch in the brake pad. And then I have to put the E clamp. It's hard to see what I'm doing. Put the E clamp here. So let me do that. Okay, that E clamp is on. Of course, you want to make sure these are on tight. You don't want them falling apart. So now this this shoe should be ready to go, reassembled. And this one, there's no hardware to put back on. So we can start putting it back together. Okay, this is the the um, adjustment for the um, drum brakes. Drum brakes typically self-adjust. So to accommodate for the thicker pads, I'm going to adjust this inward. 
and then once it's in, we will adjust it um, so there's just minimal clearance. All right, so I have this one kind of laying in there. Let's do the same for this one. Okay, when you put this together, you can kind of see how it, these teeth, so you hear how it clicks as you adjust it, so you need to make sure that this is seated in there correctly. how I did it instead of wasting a lot of film. Okay, what I realized was trying to futz around with this um, trying to keep these balanced and hook them together is kind of impossible. So you need to oh geez you need to use the springs to hold it on at least loosely and then you can adjust it from there. So, of course, it's hard to pick them up. Hold on. Okay. So, let me do this. Okay, stay on. Stay there. No. <laughs> it's funny, I'm sure actual mechanics look at this and they're like, what the hell are you doing? Moron. But you know, that's how you learn. Oh, God. All right. Okay, I got this spring on. I actually, what I wound up using was my um, locking, my locking pliers to uh, my vice grips to get it on. A little bit easier, so I got that one on loose. Well, it's on, and now I'm gonna get the other one on. All right, I'm trying to get this damn spring in the big one using a small screwdriver. No, oh, it's so close. There we go. All right, so because of the way that this hooks in, this spring hooks in, you got to make sure that you have have that side of it hooked in before you put this shoe in, because you'll never get it obviously. On that, on the hidden side, you go into this latch, just like I have here. Um, you can see my adjustment arm is back in place. Now I need to hook the bottom. So let me do that. Okay, what I'm attempting to do is to get this spring connected between these two points. It goes behind this plate. So that's what I'm doing. Alright, got it in using the needle nose vice grips. It was a challenge. Uh, right here you see the the um, emergency brake that needs to go in there. So let me get that in there. Okay, got that back in. All right, now I need to put the, uh, the retaining spring over here. All right, there you go. The last retaining clip is in place. I want to make sure that everything looks like it's lined up right. 
the adjuster is in the slot properly, all the clips look good, your um, parking brake cable is connected at both spots, your spring is in behind this metal, and of course you want these um, your shoes to be lined up in the caliber up top, it should be in the slot. So that looks alright to me. I'm going to try to put the um, drum on and see how tight it is. Okay, as I kind of suspected, the, um, the drum doesn't want to fit over it with the new pads, so I need to turn this adjusting wheel to, uh, to uh, minimize the distance. Okay, to adjust the to um, make the adjusting arm shorter, I'm turning the wheel um, counterclockwise. And I'm using the secondary screwdriver here to keep the, this little tension arm off. Alright, so let's see if this fits now. I have it back down almost all the way. some more digging around. All right, it looks like my issue is the uh, shoe on this side isn't isn't seated all the way up, so I'm going to try to give it a shot with a hammer just to pop it. It's not quite on the little nub like it's supposed to be, so that's probably what's making it hang up. Okay, that looks better. Good. And I think if you want to do further adjustment, um, there's a little rubber cap back here that you can spin the wheel from. But I'm going to try to just take this off and and uh, adjust the adjust this little wheel a little bit, expand it out and uh, just do some trial and error because it's easier for me to spin it with the brake drum off and on so let me play with that a little bit all right backed it out maybe half inch quarter inch I don't know. I think what they said is you're supposed to um, kind of adjust it so you start to feel drag and then just back it out a little bit. drum on and I am I did pop the little rubber plug in the back and I'm trying to just adjust this a little bit more make it a little tighter you can hear it click as you move the wheel pain in the ass of course like everything screwdriver's too long <sighs>
All right, I think that's pretty good. So at this point, I'm going to move over to the passenger side and do the same thing. If I see anything of note, I'll document it, but it should be the exact same procedure, except without all the problems. All right, I'm over on the um, driver's side now, and I, I got this thing totally apart in the span of five minutes. And I think you'll find the same thing, that your second side is going to go much faster than your first, because you're going to know exactly where everything goes. So, um, yeah, everything's apart. Now i just got to put the uh, new pads in place and reverse it. And the, the most difficult part of this is, you know, the, getting the springs off and on, obviously. So, uh, and then just making sure everything's seated. So let me, uh, let me get this back together and we'll come back with a final report. All right, here's the um, driver, or I'm sorry, the passenger side, all put back together. Uh, it wasn't a huge deal. Doing the other wheel first definitely is a big help. It is reverse of everything on the other side, but if you do what I uh, suggested earlier and just lay the parts out as they come off, it's really not that difficult. The hardest part is just getting the, um, this, the big spring back on while you have this arm in the right place and then getting the spring down below on. I, I use a um, needle nose vice grips to do that. It seemed to work pretty well. So if you don't have one of those, you might want to add that to your repertoire. Um, but I'm going to put the drum back on and adjust it a little bit. And uh, then it'll be time for a road test. Okay, there's the truck. Had to do a couple of adjustments through that little hole in the back of the brake assembly that I talked about. I just kept backing it out, spinning the wheel until I felt just the slightest bit of resistance, meaning the pads were seated. And then I just left it there, took it out for a test drive, feels much better. So I think we're good to go. Um, pedal grabs higher, grabs stronger, so I think that's it. I would call this another successful project with its normal bumps in the road. Hope you found this helpful in some way. Learn from my mistakes. Until next time, this is Duffman. Signing off.